So we're going to continue our discussion about baptism. This is a slide we ended with last week. We're going to go into uh, one more discussion on traditions, and then we're going to talk about preferences. <clears throat> but before we get to preferences, I wanted to lay bare another side of the tradition coin, which unfortunately uh, I expect most of us are familiar with in some way or another. So there's an issue that exists throughout history. I don't know why humanity is this way, but we seem to spend an inordinate amount of time defining our differences instead of our commonalities. It's as if we were born to segregate and then use those differences as weapons against each other. This happens in the church. Now, of course, when Ray Fuller says church, he means lowercase church. It's 2,023 years old, thereabout. Goes all the way back to when the first local churches started vying for authority, who was going to be the head church in the community. Continues on as local churches then vie for control of what becomes the church. Continues through the East-West Schism and all the drama in between. And in every Reformation, Counter-Reformation, uprising, insurgency, resurgency, movement throughout the history of the church. When we subdivide and we close ranks and we begin to identify our differences, baptism came up as a topic. Always, every time. What? I thought I heard some murmurings. Go ahead. What do you got? Oh, oh. All right, all right. A little, uh, little guy on guy crime there. Okay. I'm okay with it. At some point in my life, I have heard or been told stories of each one of the things that I'm going to unroll in front of you as we go through this. Uh, however, as a blanket statement, I'm going to say that. Every single time that a group of Christians has gotten together and decided that their baptism rites were better than anyone else's or developed dogma specifically to exclude others, it's an indicator that that church is not healthy, and within 80 years, something major happened in that group of Christians that affected them negatively. So these are the things I've heard. Let's see what you've heard. Anyone ever heard that? Okay. Weird. I, I was born combative. And whenever people tell me something that I've made the decision to do after long and careful consideration was wrong, I just go into Wolverine mode, and I want to know why. And if I get down to your heart and soul and it's dogma, it's not going to be good for you. So are you going to expound upon that? Okay, so remember the rules of engagement. It's not about someone else being wrong. Okay, it's about the processes and procedures they took to get there. So, I have a family member who was told in order to attend worship at a local church where he lives, he had to be baptized both into their faith and re-baptized because his baptism was not sufficient. I, I, I know what I would do, but... It's tough. He wants to be with Christians. He doesn't want to be alone. Right. Yes, ma'am. So yes. Both specifically into that congregation and into that denomination.
Yes, so thank you for that clarification because I struggled with wording on that. So when I say baptized into a faith, remember my rules of engagement. I was trying not to, you know, engineer an attack on another denomination. I'm not into that. Uh, so sometimes I get, I get stuck on wording and then we have a discussion about what it means. Go ahead, Hans. We'll get to that. That's a preference. I do not disagree with it. Let's stay on tradition. Hold your story. I love your story. Okay. All right. I'm going to get back to you, though, when we get to, when we get to preference. <laughs> that's, that's tough. Did everybody over there hear that? So, so yes, there are positions that, that, that can be taken and, and, and will be taken by people uh, when you're locked into this kind of mindset. So I'm going to touch on what you just said as a lead off for that. I have met brothers and sisters who, if you cannot utter the right phrase, it does not mean a thing. And so they would have put you back under for what, did you all hear exactly what he said when he came up out of the water previously, he said, thanks for getting me wet? This kind of man, the man that I knew that said this, would have just put you right back under until there were no bubbles. <laughs> it was that important to him. And, and, and I, thought it was, I thought it was wrong at the time. I think it's more horrible the older I get. Um, because it's a, it's a form... Well, it's just dogma. It's just dogma. Backing up a little bit, I've been to a place where if you were not baptized into their group or thing, you could not participate in even taking communion because you were Well, welcome to the Catholic Church, bro. Um, the, the, the comment was about if you aren't baptized in our faith, you can't take communion. You're not in communion with us. Are they, are they a requirement? Are they, are they that linked together? So what Wade said was because he was not baptized into their faith, they would not serve him communion. Okay, did you hear that? The reason, the reason your spiritual forefathers that created the term Church of Christ, one of the reasons they started their movement was because the Presbyterian Church had closed its communion to non-members. And, and, and Right. When people start withholding rights of franchise, as I say it, you should begin to look at whether or not they have that authority. That, and that is in relation to all freedoms if you're an American. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. And we disagree with that. Remember... Because I'll hold you guys to this. What I continue to hear massive murmuring agreement on is that these are bad things. So let's not do bad things. Let's not do this. 
How about that? That was actually a rule in a lot of churches in the Middle Ages. You know why? Because most of the baptisms in the New Testament occurred in the River Jordan. And it becomes important. When they talk about the location, specifically when it's mentioned, and if you become too dogmatic and too literal in what you read, you take a hard right turn into stupid and you create rules. I think, I think you might be the only person I know, Hans, who's actually baptized someone in a river. So you know it was blessed. It was the Kansas River. You know Kansas is blessed because it says it right on the sign when it says, Welcome to Kansas. That to know that they were they had to go shower because they dipped in the Kansas River. So there's an opposite. If it wasn't done in our sauna of salvation, it doesn't count. I've actually heard this in a Church of Christ. So so don't ever think I'll hesitate to point a finger at self. And it, it, it's it, the person who said it was emphatic. And they were speaking what they understood to be a truth. We had a lot of discussions about it. I don't know that they ever changed their mind. They were much older than me and much more set in their ways. How about that? Heard that? I didn't know that water had a required depth to be considered baptism depth. But, let's see. I've heard this one. If an elder wasn't present, or a member of the clergy, it didn't happen. Does that make sense? All right, so strange question. Can you baptize yourself? Hans says no. I got one vote on the table. All right, so post-apocalypse, I'm the only human that I can find for years, and I stumble on a Bible, and I read it, and I understand, and I want to. May I fall in the water? Go ahead and write your novel but I think it is pretty obvious that people baptize themselves. And I have not seen it depicted any other way. What are our thoughts? It was, de- it was purposefully designed to be a stump-the-chump question. You can feel any way you want. Scripture's not being revealed here. I like the term. That's a code violation in the Church of Christ. That's right. You're going to get a spiritual ticket. The uh, only brought it up. Only brought it up. Not not to start that debate, but to start consideration in our minds about challenging our own dogma. Did you guys hear that? So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, are you done? No, you go ahead. Because I want I to just take that thought. Okay, I'm going to hold it. Okay, there you go. 
I was hoping we would get around to that answer. And I'm going to use that, though, to transition into some, tra into some preference discussion because uh, it's a great jumping point. By the way, Jordan River. We tend to. Uh, there's a reason uh, that Scripture says to talk to each other about Scripture. The craziest thoughts that have ever been put on paper are our Greek forefathers overthinking the questions and then providing a Greek circular answer to a problem that didn't exist. And, and we get a lot of problems in, in our history after that. Wade, and then we're going to go to preferences. Then we're not going to you. No. <laughs> Go ahead. <clears throat> Okay, so that's the second time we've brought up people not wanting to be baptized. And it's okay, because whose decision is it? That's right, don't argue it. When someone brings up those reasons to me, or when someone says I'm not ready, I say yes. And with that, we must transition into preference, uh, but hands keep going up, so let's go. All right, that's the Achilles question. So if my elbow isn't up under the water, am I immortal? I think we just amputate the arm because the arm's not saved. Yes, ma'am. Right, he's in the Alaskan wilderness and he wants to be baptized over the internet. Right. So I agree, but I agree for personal reasons. I've done that in this church. What she described was this incident, as, and I'll explain it as it occurred to us. We received a phone call from a brother in Alabama who had been working with a sister who had just got here. During their last conversation, she said, I want to be baptized. He called us. He said, can you do this? I said, yes. Now, we have questions, right, because we have our own dogma. I said, so can I meet with her? She said, yes. I gave her the standard four questions. All of you should be able to under, you know, know what we, we, we say, you know. Have you heard the word? You know, do you understand? Do you want to be baptized? Do you want to be? And so we hooked up with him on Zoom and we baptized her right here that afternoon after a conversation. So yes. So it only changed the difference if you are you are, you know, you're a believer, if this person baptized on Zoom or whatever, was not they didn't think about a person. Was it a random person or was it a Christian? Pardon? The person who Put them in the water. So that's, that's, that's neat. That's novel. I've never heard that story. That's wonderful. I'll think about it. <laughs> Not because I want to stand in judgment, but because I want to think about that. I've never heard that situation before. And so before I have an intellectual reaction and an em emotional one, I'm going to pause and consider.
Okay, did you hear that? I'll get to you just a second, Fred. So the bottom line statement was, why can't we let it? And I'm going to throw it out as a question back. Why can't you let it be between God and that person? We're going to get to that preference. All right, here we go. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, Fred's challenge to us was exactly what we started with this morning. Why do we continue to look at the differences and reasons to segregate and separate? So before we start the discussion, remember these are my preferences. You're allowed to have yours. I throw them at you so that you can throw them back in my face. Just to be clear, I believe baptism is a necessary act to become a Christian. I really don't care why other people do it. I don't think about it. It doesn't bother me. I'm not going to get quizzy about it. I'm not going to get questioning about it. I know why I did mine. Because after over a decade of stubbornness, my patience, or, or rather I should say that my, my ability to resist God was exhausted, and I submitted. Not because of any reason that someone showed me on the slideshow, which, by the way, I love that old slideshow. Yeah. So, did everybody hear that? Yes is the number one thing I've ever heard from a baptism by a person about to be baptized. Because we ask the question, what we look for is affirmation. So, when it comes to being baptized, I think the Bible is clear that it, it's a do thing. And I stick with that. Because I like to keep my faith fairly simple. Shaking your head. Right. So I'll steal, I'll steal part of what you said. Um, nowhere in Scripture do any of this, the disciples try to prove or disprove baptism. It's a thing they do. Did you get up in the morning and, and are you going to have a meal today? You're going to eat? You're going to drink some water? You're going to hydrate? It's a thing you do. My response back to you, going back to Fred's counter question to us, was never forget our reason for existing, to bring people to Jesus, so that we and live our lives in a way that we can have that discussion, because believing is their choice. I have let many people go. Does that shock you? Had the conversation? Disengaged. Moving on in my life, i got other people to talk to. Someone else, hopefully, my prayer is, baptize them. If not, I'm still not responsible for their soul. I have been responsible for two souls other than mine in my life. We'll get to those. So let it be their choice. Don't argue them into the water. Forced baptism has never created a convert. It did get people wet. Okay. Every time I have had the discussion about baptism with someone, it 
came out organically as a part of our discussion of Christ when they were ready. What must I do? It wasn't always asked that way, but sometimes it was asked exactly that way. So there's an art to that science Hans just uttered. Okay, did you all hear what he said? Uh, so, some common mistakes when we are talking to others about Christ. Notice I did not say when we are converting <laughs> or, or when we are preparing them to be baptized. It's neither of those two. There's always some Scripture you can, you can use to talk to someone about Christ. There's all of Scripture. What, what Hans said was don't be afraid to have the, com the Christ conversations. And if you're reading Scripture, the what next will come up. Did I get that close enough? Yeah. Not 100%. I hit the 70% mark. That's success in the army. So I do it slightly different. What, what Hans is saying is that when he bumps into, into people who are worshiping other gods and they say, I'm going to go pray to my gods to do this, Hans offers them the opportunity to pray to our God. I'm not disagreeing with you. What I do is I tell them I will pray for you on this topic. Softer. Less likely to create a hard edge between them and I. You do, you do. So, ma'am, you had. So a story, if you didn't, if you didn't hear it, you know, a, a story of an individual who's sort of a conversion machine, uh, a, a guy who spontaneously has the conversation anywhere, any when, and every when, uh, and, and is adept and skilled at the task. That's beautiful. It's not me. Wish it was. So... I'm going, to, I'm going to thank God for that guy, but I'm not going to crush myself for the fact that it's not my skill is the takeaway that I'm giving to you. I have a different technique. How about that one? That should be a punch in the face, maybe. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Let it die with you and your generation. And I say that because it's alive and well. We always want to act like it's something else. Yes, ma'am.
That's the way it's supposed to happen, I would offer. All right. Hans, and then we'll go to Wade, and then we'll go over here. When, 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 when they bring it up about themselves, and, and they want to compare it to yours, you just explain to it. share your story. Wait. All right, so I've been waiting to give one of these out. So this is a Bible book. And uh, you can use it in, in our little store to buy candy. And, and I'm, I'm very uh, reserved with these. So for, for calling everyone out, Wade gets the first Bible book handed out here in a class. Because it's exactly right. You can want to be so right that you kill someone else's soul. Now, you can't do that. You don't have the authority and the power to do that. But emotionally, you can turn them away from God. When you use the Bible like a club, and I'm saying this poorly because I'm emotional about the topic, but we'll come up with better ways to say it over time. All the way in the back, and then we'll go to you, ma'am. I disagree emphatically. Here, here, however, here's how I'll explain it back to you, what I believe you did. Was that you had a discussion about the Bible with him, and in, a part, in, in that discussion, he, with your assistance, came to the conclusion that he wanted to be rebaptized, which is different. If you tell me right now that you went to him and you said, your baptism sucked, you're going to hell, and I need to fix you, I am going to stand my ground and say you were so wrong, and I'm just praising God that it ended up right. Okay? <laughs> Maybe. You, I believe that, yes. I believe that that's usually the outcome. Because we need to... Remember, what are the two things that Christ gives you? Mercy and grace. And if you're not exercising those, we're doing it wrong. Ma'am. I think you would, because of the man right next to you. <laughs> All right, there you go. So we're desperately looking for the loophole to allow us to do this. Guys, I'm not going to allow it. Ma'am, go ahead. Yes, so I'm going to push through these next two bullets. I'm going to, go ahead, go ahead. No, that's, I'm gonna, that's why I'm pushing ahead. I'm going, to, I'm going to stop you guys from creating loopholes. I don't allow any. If you want to, if you want to brief the loophole, you get up here and teach the class. Again, I'm not going there. I've only done this once, and I apologize to all of you that, that, that this day has finally come. But I won't come off that point. We can have personal conversations about it. So we, we talked about, he's talking about, so we talked about John's baptism in the, in the history part. Uh, two times in scripture, disciples are talked about who knew only John's baptism. In one of them, they didn't get rebaptized because they understood everything. They just had to have an understanding of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. It was given to them and they moved on. That's Apollos. 
Immediately after that, he stumbles upon another group of disciples who know only John's baptism and are off base on a lot of the other teaching. Paul educates them and baptizes them. He did ask them about the Holy Spirit, but nowhere in that script does he ask them specifically about their baptism. Yeah. I'll give you your loopholes. Go ahead. I agree. There you go. Now you've got it. Now you got it. Can we move on? Okay. Because I do want to talk about your children. <laughs> not your children. Not your children specifically. Yeah. Yeah, so before we talk about the only other two souls I've ever truly been responsible for, when, when I throw up this bullet, I truly mean infant and child baptism. I don't think Scripture supports it due to the understanding requirement. And I think it is trying to put God in a cage. Well, God has to take them now because they're baptized. It gets back to what Fred said earlier. How about we let God be God? And, and let him figure it out. Because he's given us the requirements. How about we just obey those? Yeah, I believe, I believe that. So... The only souls I've ever been responsible other than mine were my children. And the way, I, the way I used to explain it to them was that as long as they were allowed, or as long as they were unbaptized, they were riding on my spiritual coattails. And I was responsible to drag them through life, and I took them with me, I tucked them up under my chicken wing, and I guarded them and guided them and directed them, and they were mine. And I would speak for them. The moment they got in the water, they were uncovered before God, responsible to him on their own, standing on their own two feet. It was their decision. I denied it twice, and they allowed it, so I knew I was right. The third time, my son said, you do not understand. I'm not asking you. I'm inviting you. And we went. So, but I'm not, and, and, and so I'm always leery of children in a herd rushing off a cliff to go get baptized. And so I only offer this up. Again, these are Ray Fuller's preferences. Absolutely free to come to me later and say you disagree with any or all of them, and we can have a discussion. But I'm always very careful as a parent about the souls of my son and daughter. I'm okay with camp baptism provided they call you. But in general, I'm not a fan of it being outside of my point of my view. If, if they're mine, that soul's mine. And I will judge when it's ready. If that makes sense. I'm just jealous that way for my children's souls. Hans. Okay, speaking of children's souls. Do they have them? Is that where you're going? Are they like pets?
No, I like that. Let me, let me. Right. So, and that's the part I want to take away from that, because I think that deserves emphasis. So, despite my emphatic ownership of their souls, please continue to do your part as a fellow Christian in our community and provide an example, mentorship, friendship, and, and, and sharing your knowledge and wisdom and understanding with them. Just know I exercise the final vote with them. We ask if they've been baptized, if they want to work. That's it. That's it, really. Yeah, I think that that point always makes itself apparent. And when... when when that stuff happens, it always comes to light. It can't be hidden. Okay, so there's a lot of scripture to support baptism in the New Testament. All of our traditions and preferences support it. That's your Venn diagram. I think I'm going to skip date and time of worship, uh, and we're going to go right into politics and digital media and other things. They're really heated topics. So stay tuned for that. We're complete. Thank you for your time.